Hey weirdos, welcome back to my channel. Um, I, as many of you already know, I am the voice of Factsverse on YouTube, and uh, I just got this uh, script from them today that they want me to voice, and I, it just looks like it's going to be very interesting. I've not read it yet, uh, so I'll actually be uh, reading it as I voice it, so it'll be a surprise to me as I voice it for you. But uh, I just thought it'd be kind of fun for you to, uh, you know, maybe some of you would actually enjoy watching me narrate a video. So uh, here we go. And by the way, if you hear this, that actually gives me a visual representation when I'm looking at the WAV file later on for editing, where all of my uh, mistakes take place. And you're probably going to hear a lot of them. So <laughs> I do a lot of editing uh, before I post anything online. Okay, here we go. Uh, so here we go. All right. Factsverse presents Scandals the Discovery Channel Tried to Hide from Viewers Over the years, the Discovery Channel has had its fair share of controversies. When something happens that could result in a major scandal, the person involved with the scandal is often fired, and the Discovery Channel severs all ties. In many cases, they're able to keep the entire story out of the media, and we have a few scandals and the people who were able to profit from them in their... And we have a few of these scandals, and the people who were able to profit from their bad behavior. When you see these scandals the Discovery Channel tried to hide from viewers, you will be shocked. First, though, help us spread the word about facts first. Click that like button, and also be sure to subscribe and click the notification bell so you don't miss our future videos. Number 1. Bear Grylls from Man vs. Wild was fired by the Discovery Channel. On the show, there were plenty of things that Bear didn't do. He even drank his own urine on the show to survive. Oh, sorry. On the show, there were plenty of things that Bear wouldn't do. That doesn't make sense either. On the show, there were... Okay, I'll try, I'll try this one. These aren't written uh, very well. Uh, sometimes these come in and you can tell that the person that wrote them did not does not speak English as their first language. All right. On the show, there were plenty of things that Bear would do. He even drank his own urine on the show to survive. There was one thing that he didn't want to do, and it got him fired. He did not want to do any other projects beyond Man vs. Wild. When he was asked to participate in two of the network's upcoming projects, he refused. After being on the air for six seasons and being on an episode with Barack Obama, he was let go because of a contract dispute. Number two, the Alaskan Bush people aren't from Alaska. There's been a lot of controversy surrounding the family featured on this show. People weren't sure how much of the show was real, since their old house was just 10 miles from the center of town. Several members of the family, including Billy, Bear, Bam, Noah, Matthew, and Gabriel, were issued citations for making false statements on their hunting and fishing licenses. The family spent most of their lives in Texas and Colorado. They got their hunting licenses shortly after moving to Alaska in 2012. Number 3. The Alaska Bush People Were Charged With Fraud In 2015, Billy Brown and Joshua Bam Bam Brown pleaded guilty to one count of unsworn falsification. Alaskan residents are eligible for money through the Alaskan Permanent Fund Division, and the fund gives full-time residents of Alaska thousands of dollars each year for just continuing to live there. Billy Brown collected $7,956 from the state, and Bam Bam received $1,174. They were both sentenced to 30 days in jail for accepting the money when they were only part-time residents. Number 4. American Guns Cancelled American Guns was a show about the Wyatt family who owned a custom gun shop in... American Guns was a show about the Wyatt family who owned a custom gun shop in Wheat Ridge, Colorado called Gunsmoke Guns. Although the ratings were good, the last episode aired in 2012. Many people believed that the show was canceled due to the gun-related tragedies, such as the Sandy Hook Elementary School shooting. 
The Discovery Channel says that was not the case, however, they still chose not to renew the show for another season, and reruns were never aired again. Number 5. Gunsmoke Guns Was Burglarized After the show was canceled, the shop was burglarized. On February 27, 2013, somebody broke into the shop by cutting a hole through the roof. The thieves stole 12 handguns and three rifles. The case was never solved, and the police weren't sure if it was a single person or if there were accomplices. Number 6. Richard Wyatt didn't have a gun license. Richard Wyatt wasn't authorized to sell guns. In 2012, in the middle of filming, Wyatt lost his federal firearms license for violating federal laws and regulations, but he continued to sell guns at his shop through the but he continued to sell guns at his shop through a straw federal firearms license that belonged to someone else. He changed the address of a store called Triggers to the address of Gunsmoke, even though he didn't own it. When someone bought a gun and filled out the necessary paperwork, Wyatt was caught. He thought it was a legal loophole, but he was indicted in 2016 for conspiring to sell guns without a license. Number 7. Richard Wyatt Failed to Report Personal Income As if Richard Wyatt wasn't in enough trouble, things just kept getting worse. About nine days after the store was broken into, the IRS raided the store as part of an ongoing investigation for tax evasion. In 2010, an agent working for the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, Firearms, and Explosives found out that Wyatt was in possession of six automatic weapons. When they looked into the store's paperwork, something didn't add up. Between 2009 and 2012, Wyatt failed to report $1.1 million in personal income. He was also charged with filing a false tax return. He was found guilty on nine tax fraud and evasion charges and one count of conspiracy to sell firearms without a license. Number 8. A patron on American Guns was arrested. A man named Wiley Newton went into the store on the last episode of the first season. He was trying to sell a Colt pistol that was worth $20,000. Turned out that gun was stolen from a private New Mexico museum. Someone familiar with the robbery happened to be watching the show and recognized the gun. Newton was charged with the robbery and trying to sell the stolen gun. Number 9. Sons of Guns star arrested for raping two minors. Sons of Guns is about Red Jacket Firearms. It's a company that manufactures and sells custom guns. When he was arrested for raping an 11-year-old girl and a 13-year-old girl, the show was canceled. One of the girls was his oldest daughter. He was found guilty on two counts of aggravated rape and one count of forcible rape. When he was convicted of rape, he was facing another charge in Livingston Parish. He was sentenced to life in prison without parole. Number 10. Molestation Accusations Will Hayden's daughter, Stephanie Hayden Ford, was on an episode of Dr. Phil. She claimed that her father had been sexually inappropriate with her when she was 12 years old. She also claimed that he sexually assaulted her cousin and one of her friends. She added that she sexually abused her 12-year-old sister. The initial charges came when a personal assistant caught Hayden naked and passionately kissing his 12-year-old daughter. Number 11. Stephanie Ford from Sons of Guns was arrested. After Stephanie's father was arrested for his horrible crimes of rape, she and her husband, Chris Ford, were also arrested on one count of cruelty to juveniles. The couple was charged with hitting their nine-year-old so hard with a belt on his lower back he had bruises. Although Chris was w Although Chris was the one who hit the boy, Stephanie was arrested as well because her son said that she was in the room when he was beaten. Number 12. Dual Survival Attempted Murder Allegations Cody London from Dual Survival filed a suit against the network. He claimed that his co-host, Joe Teddy, threatened to kill him while they were filming the show. He says that the network tried to make it look like he was losing his mind during filming. What really happened was that Teddy was having an ice... 
What really happened was that Teddy was waving an ice axe at him and threatened to buy... Threatened to buy... Threatened to buy him on a mountain? <sighs> threatened to... What word are they trying to use there? I'm just going to say kill instead of buy. All right. <laughs> what really happened was that Teddy was waving an ice axe at him and threatened to kill him on a mountain in Norway. This wasn't the first time he says that he was threatened. While they were filming in Hawaii, London says that Teddy threatened to impale him with a spear. He also says that Teddy showed him photos of people he had killed when he was in the CIA. Number 13. The Naked and Afraid Crew Helps the Contestants Naked and Afraid places a man and a woman out in the middle of nowhere for 21 days and then they're forced to try and survive. According to a female contestant, the crew fed her bread, rice, and baby food when she got sick after she ate a turtle. They also gave her an IV drip two separate times to keep her from becoming severely dehydrated. While they were giving her these things to save her life, the Daily Mail says that it was dishonest because the show never mentioned helping the woman. Number 14. Scripted Segments on Naked and Afraid In the last episode of Season 3, Honora Bowen and Matt Struzel competed together in Brazil. Matt completed the challenge, but Honora tapped out after suffering from heat exhaustion. Honora claims that she was coerced into starting a fight with Matt to add drama to the episode. She also claims that the producers wanted her to lie about her background and her relationship with her father. She says that she didn't tap out due to heat exhaustion. It was because of bladder issues. She says the producers wouldn't let her tap out after she asked several times. In the end, she faked a medication condition to be allowed to leave. Number 15. Counting Cars Controversy Danny Coker was the car expert on Pawn Stars. Thanks to his knowledge of vehicles, he got his own show. On the show, he bought customized and sold unique cars at Count's Customs Auto Shop. On the show, people seemed happy with the shop, however, not all people felt that way. Many visitors complained about the overpriced merchandise and the location of the shop. Number 16. American Pickers Isn't As Lucky As You Think This show focuses on Mike Wolf and Frank Fritz. With the help of their office manager, Danielle, they hunt for pieces from collectors and they pick through junk to find something great. The way they show the men finding the collections isn't accurate. The producers would get collections from collectors, and they would go through the items to find the best ones, and only then do the two stars of the show examine the collections. Number 17. Pawn Stars Also Isn't So Lucky Since Pawn Stars and American Pickers are on the same network, they have a similar protocol. It seems that Rick Harrison has plenty of friends, and they're all experts on one thing or another. It isn't Harrison who brings in the experts, though. It's actually the TV producers. The experts are brought in ahead of time before they even get to meet Harrison. Number 18. American Restorations Foul Up This is another spin-off from Pawn Stars. The show focuses on the cast making old items look new. Unfortunately, some fans have noticed a few slip-ups. On one episode, titled Secret Fan, they were restoring a go-kart. The wheels weren't put on correctly, which caused the cart to wobble. And that made people want to take their antiques elsewhere for restoration. Number 19. Pawn Stars cast doesn't work there. Pawn Stars focuses on the lives of Corey, Chum Lee, the old man, and Rick. On the show, they inspect artifacts and old goods to find items to buy. Before the show, they all worked there on a regular basis. Today, they are rarely ever there. Them being at the shop often got in the way of potential sales. So now they're only in the store during filming, which doesn't happen very often. Number 20. American Pickers is staged. When Frank and Mike negotiate sales with the sellers, it's staged. 
The two men will often bicker on screen, but that's fake. In fact, the producers negotiate the price before filming begins. Subscribe for more! Yep, reality television isn't all that real.